yeah. What's up? You can jump in the shot if you want to. What's up? It's your man Yang and Kruma for the Arena 2013, uh, the Arena Uncensored. We done changed it out here at the Malcolm X uh, Festival. Bumpy Cross, you know. So you know how we do at the Arena to bring you informative information. This, this Today, man, I'm honored and pleasure to have my man King Noble on with us. You know King Noble from the YouTube. You know King Yo Noble from the Powerful Statements. But today we have an opportunity to rap with King Noble and find out what goes into the makeup of King Noble. You know what I'm saying? How, how King Noble comes to these conclusions and comes to uh, your perception on life and comes up with the philosophies that you do. So first, you know, just start out, give us a little bit of background about who you are. Um, <clears throat> I've been, I would say I've just been woke for 15 years, man. I just, uh, 15 years along this path of black consciousness. That's what I would say. Um, and it's been a long road. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's yeah. right. So, during the path, the path led you to black supremacy. But along the path to black supremacy, were there any other pit stops? Were there any other schools of thought? Were you a Muslim? Were you a Hebrew? It's like, were you a Moor? You know what I'm saying? While you just came into the enlightenment of black supremacy. That's a good point. I started off, um, I, I think I might have pressed the button. I don't know. I think we're still on. Let me check. Okay. I started off um, just on a metaphysical path, um, deep off in the metaphysics of all sorts. And then um, I joined the Moore Science Symbol of America and um, studied that. And then I got off into Rastafari. Mm -hmm. And that got me off into the Afrocentric and conscious movement. And then I evolved from black consciousness and black nationalism okay. over to black supremacy. Okay. That's when I got into black supremacy. Yeah. What was the what was the God in philosophy? What was the thing that stood out the most about black supremacy that made you say, okay, this is it? You know, I've tried all those other things, but this right here is what's happening. I think black supremacy is the main ingredient of black nationalism, uh, black consciousness. It's the universal aspect of all of them. In order to have a nation, you got to be supreme. Okay. Um, if you don't realize the supremacy of your nation, then you cannot have sovereignty. You cannot make laws, you cannot govern yourself. You cannot free yourself until you are supreme over that which enslave you. If you're not higher than an idea that is beneath you, then you will never, you'll never be free from that idea. So black supremacy is to me the ultimate ingredients of every aspect. And it's the most unapologetic aspect of all of them. Well, what would you say, what would, what would your response be to the people that say, okay, black supremacy is hate. If you have something supreme, you have to have something inferior. What would be your response to that? And especially, you know how they get when we black people yeah. start to declare that we, you know, anything other than niggas. What would be, would be your response to supremacy being a hate teacher? I would ask them, um, is the Supreme Court about hate? Mm -hmm. You know, it's called the Supreme Court because it's the highest, supposedly highest ruling order. They make the final judgment, right? right. So um, if you don't denote their supremacy with hate, with their government and the way they operate, then how could you, when a black man stand up and recognize that he's supreme, how could you have a problem with that? If you got a problem with supremacy, then get rid of your Supreme Court, get rid of everything that's, get rid of all that, let it go. But if, right. if we're going to have supremacy, we need to have a black one too. Man, it is humid out here. You know, we run into techno difficulties. Um, what we do, I want to get back to, talk to the sister a little bit, come back, definitely talk, and come back to a black son. Now, sister, you was making, hold on, hold on for a minute, hold on for a minute. Put on for a minute. So you ain't getting none of that. All right, this Black Sun with the Arena 2013. Okay. Oh man, um, we were talking about the whole uprising of uh, Ferguson, right? Baltimore. Baltimore. I'm sorry, Baltimore. Yeah, well, Ferguson, Baltimore. Right, I mean, right, we're all. Right, I mean, we, right. we, you know, police brutality. So my thing is. You know, we speak about an uprising. My question is, you know, because I mean, we have the youth that look like they're ready for, you know, revolution, revolution mm -hmm. change. But my, my, my question is, what does the end game look like? What, like, what does, I guess, the structure of the government, you know, like you talk about black rulership, black supremacy. I mean, can you give us in detail what that look like? Well, it's kind of hard for me to see the end game. Okay. Especially if I'm looking through the eyes of Trayvon Martin, or I'm looking through the eyes of Mike Brown, 
what does the end game mean to a person who's barely existing because they're being hunted and preyed on by a wicked enemy. So I think the Baltimore insurrection was important enough for them to do whatever they needed to do to let the system feel the injustices that were happening to them. It's, we can't, it's kind of hard to have an end game when your beginning is threatened. And our beginning is a threat right now. And I think to secure ourselves on this planet with the genocide that's happening to us in America, I think even to begin to start to do that, an end game will begin to unfold and evolve from that. Okay, so you're saying it's, the end game has to evolve? It's like, you hungry today, you don't know what you're gonna eat next week. But you know if you don't get some nutrients in you, you're gonna die right now. That's to me, that's where the black community is at right now. We can't, we ain't, we're not gonna make it to an end game if we don't do something and whatever we can right now in order to stand up against the brutal forces and savage forces that are attacking us right now, to me, like they haven't, never have or haven't in a very long time. You know? Okay, okay. Um, I guess my next question would be, uh, yeah, I know you got some, yeah, some yeah. All right. Yeah, just make sure, yeah, make sure. I got, I got it at the cigarette for a hot minute, man. Oh, okay, okay. I got about four in my Oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, no problem, Yang, no problem. Okay, Yang. Now, you know, you made a series of videos, I know, um, dealing with, you know, different schools of thoughts, you know, and um, my question as a black nationalist, I mean, you, you've articulated, and I'm not going to really mention no names, oh, I'll mention the names, like the unks and polites and the sonnetters. You know, um, I mean, have these brothers ever claimed to be black nationalists? Is that why you go out there, or is it just, is it just, I mean, what is it about them that inspires you to deal, you know, with those brothers? I, I think um, some of them, I can say, have claimed to be black nationalists, but others have an audience of black nationalists. Right. And I'm interested in presenting true black na nationalism to those audiences Absolutely. so that they know that a, a true, raw, and real black nationalism exists today. That is people standing for that one billion percent. Absolutely. So I reach those people. I expose the half-assed black, uh, black nationalists That's right. That's right. in order to present the real black nationalism to people. And I know our people are very intelligent, very logical. That's why they're studying and doing everything they do. So once I put the information out there, they can decipher it for themselves. If you're looking for an answer, if some people are looking for an answer and a mathematician presents that answer to them and they, they're really serious about math, then they'll understand what that answer is. Absolutely. So the, the reason I deal with them so much is not just particularly for them, but for their audiences. Right, because I notice how you might deal with the Hebrew Israelites who claim that they have the answer. Yeah. Or the Moore Science Temple, they mm. claim they have the answer. Right. You know, and I've listened to one of your videos where you said you went through all those schools of thoughts and my I guess my question to you is why, what's keeping these brothers in these schools of thought? What's keeping them in these schools of thought? I think, honestly, I think that, you know, you read what you're wrong. Right, yeah, I think there's a certain glory that people get out of the amount of knowledge that they appear to have. Right. I think it's a, it's a vanity in there too. I think okay. they've got to positions of vanity and now they're distracted from the true path of black nationalism or black liberation. So I think ha have, having all this knowledge and having these audiences of people listening to them, making them feel valuable, like they're, they, like they're, they're saying something, right. uh, even the amount of money they make, debates and stuff like that, I think that has distracted them from true black nationalism. Absolutely. But I, I do believe that they, they recognize it when they hear it though. That's a fact. But I think that's the main reason. I think it's, it's a lot of vanity, man. It's a lot of just egocentrism. You know, and I think that's that's what's really blocking them, man. And so they're willing to give up the comforts of ignorance, then they can use practical, true practical knowledge. Right, right. You know. Now, and I'm glad you said that because I mean I deal with a lot of, and I know you also deal with a lot of Hebrew Israelites and a lot of Moors, and they always talk about unity, unity. You know, but they come from it from a stance of, but in order for this unity to happen, you got to accept our doctrine. That our doctrine is only two doctrines. But, you know, as, as a scientific person, I have a problem because when you have the Hebrews that are stuck, I mean, they're all stuck on a belief system. So when do we come with a practical sense? Because I know one thing about those brothers that 
just like you and me, them brothers, they like to drink clean water. Mm. You know, I'm assuming they like non-GMO foods. And that, that we all hate release brutality. So when do we set aside the doctrines that we can't prove and deal with the more practical applications of nationalism? When the white man kicking our door in? Yep. Oh, it's too late then, bro. <laughs> Some people, strangely, people don't understand the need for black unity until they're challenged by the system of white supremacy. It's when they're going through the worst stuff. It's like, you know, when you can't get your rent money up, you throw a rent party. Right. You couldn't get along with your neighbors, so you couldn't pay your rent or to something go down or your house get robbed. So the white man is going to have to really move on them, man, for them to see, separate the fantasy from reality, separate entertainment from real nation building, man. That's a fact. That's, just, that's the harsh truth, man, until it hits home. It's not real to them until it hits home to them. Wow. You know, some of us, it has hit home for us. You know, I've been raided by the FBI, raided by the CIA. Absolutely. So I know what we're up against. So I, that's why I don't have time to play the games. Right, right. Now, I know who my enemy is. And I'm glad you said that, because I know you, you had a situation where Irritated Genie yeah. had, you know, made up a story about you and, and it affected your kids. I mean, you want to speak on that, brother? Um, he made some statements, I think. That's what I expected. You know, that's what you can expect from an agent. Okay. When somebody is, is really making some real revolutionary moves to try to discredit them, this is not nothing new, and try to defame them. And I think that's what happened. I think since I won't, you know, bow down to whatever their uh, ideology is, the dogmatism that's parading itself as consciousness, then I became a target. Because well, what, what is your ideology? I, I couldn't understand. What is My ideology is the total destruction of white supremacy. My, my ideology is black supremacy, is black nationalism. Um, my, I didn't got to the point of just all-out urban fucking guerrilla warfare, man. Really, to be honest with you, okay. that's the fact. Now, you know. now, a person might say, "Cause now, now, this is for the record. I'm all for black militancy. I'm all for militancy." But one, now, another person, like you know, brother Malcolm, we had Malcolm X Festival mm -hmm. talking about that militancy is a protecting tool of politics. Now, I don't want people to get spooked out on my politics. You know, politics is simply, if I'm a bully, you know, my politics is coming to the school and taking your money. That's politics. I don't just come to the school and just beat you up for no reason. There's some politics involved in that. So my, 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 my question to you is, you know, how do we get our people geared toward a, a, or a politic or a policy that will... Well, I guess my question would be, what would push us towards the militants? Um, more situations like Baltimore. Okay. It's unavoidable. I mean, we got the media now. We see them killing us wholesale. Right. It's inescapable. Absolutely. We won't avoid. We're not going to be able to escape it. It's going to force the people to become more militant. I see a rise in militancy in the youth. That's now right. us as the seniors and elders. Now all we got to do is organize. All we got to do is set the net now and fish them out and do what we got to do. Absolutely. It's already done, man, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, all right. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. It's recording now. Yeah. Just do whatever y'all do. Hold it like that. Don't hit that. I see what's happening. Yeah, hit by this. Like, just hit by this. Make sure both of everybody... What'd you leave off on? What'd you leave off on? Oh, we were just... Uh, Baltimore. Okay, okay. You talked about the statements. You already talked about some of the statements. Um, we did cover some statements. Okay. Yeah. You good. All right. So we record now. So we back at you, man. Your boy Yang out here again with Noble. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, so where does black supremacy go from here? I know I heard you talking about the long-term objective and goals, but I mean, where do you go from this point? You know, we see the steps and the progress you're making on educating the people. Is there any programs or social training that we're starting to prepare the people for these conditions and the uh, change of government? Like I said, you know, and I, I made this point. I made a, an analogy comparing Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton okay. to Farrakhan. And it's one of the, I think it's one of the greatest, greatest analogies I've ever used to make a point. Farrakhan pushes nationalism like a nation. He puts he adds Islam to it, but it's still a, a certain element of nationalism there. We need to separate from the white man. He teaches this and get our own land, and it comes from Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton 
mobilize us on situations that are going on that affect black people in order to raise national attention and to put pressure on the political system. Yeah. Those are two different strategies. My point in bringing that up is, is this a question of what are the people ready for? Black supremacy objective is to survive and broadcast to people are ready for what we have to offer. You, I can talk separatism, I can talk guerrilla warfare, I can talk nation building, I can talk independence, but until the people are ready up for it, I'm just talking. So, there's no program on the table but preparation for the type of social settings that are gonna be perfect for people to come in the true enlightenment of who they are. You follow where I'm going with that? I do follow where you're going with that. Cause I mean, that's why Farrakhan hasn't done it. Yeah. Because the people want what well, if I can go to Ferguson right now, we, we can put a little army of men together and go to Ferguson and say we're gonna tear up Ferguson and, and put a new system there. We're gonna go to Baltimore and tear the system up. Now I'm from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, so I can't go tell them what they need to do in Baltimore. Right, right. right. I can't go to Ferguson and tell them what they need to do. So that I can't put a plan on the table for them. But what I can do is continue to make sure that I, I enlighten them and get this information out so that when they are pushed to the point of needing a plan, yeah. then one is on the table. Man, I can right. put the information out there so that they can grasp it at a point when they need it. But right now, our people got a lot of waking up to do to even start talking about laying a national or even global governmental structure. We got so much work to do, it's, it's almost unimaginable. Okay, okay. You know? so, this is, so we're saying that this is just the first stage of the whole thing is just to awaken the people. Yeah. You know, okay, okay. And uh, put, put it out there, I mean like, like they say, agitate, mm -hmm. um, take advantage of these, of these situations and use them to wake people up until right. it comes around full circle. But in the meantime, what black supremacists are doing is mastering independence. We, we're off the grid trying to be out the matrix. We're practicing, doing training for urban warfare ourselves. Right. I mean, we're doing our own thing, but I can't say that represents what the masses of black people are doing. What was the deficiencies in black nationalism that you felt like, okay, this is not just, this is not sufficient enough? Man, that's an excellent question. I don't think that black nationalism is inefficient. I think that the approach was inefficient. I looked in the so-called conscious community, and I'm gonna keep it real. I look at these different black organizations, and everybody that's leading them is light-skinned. A whole bunch of light-skinned people walking around in Dajikis. They hating black right in the damn conscious community. Right. So I said, I, I'm thinking, you know, it's black nationalism. I'm thinking there was a really a black love there. I mean, a melanated love, like this guy that's right here. I'm thinking that we're gonna we're gonna have melanated love, but I saw a lot of hatred of the melanated people and I saw a lot of light-skinned supremacy with a dajiki on and I said the, the majority of African people in the world are melan are very melanated African Americans we are a little we, we, we tend to be browner sometimes and fluctuate in the light so if we're gonna have global African supremacy or global black supremacy then that means the melanated people must rise up. That means there are people that look like the majority of African people. You follow? Like, what are the majority of African people? If I go to Africa, what shade is the majority of African people? So how can I be a representative of the majority of African people and I look like Farad Muhammad? I look like light, bright, and damn near white. Will we be setting up a class, a class for light-complected brothers and sisters, though? Ooh, ooh, let me say, let me say, let me say. It ain't no plan when you got a mixture of white in you. It ain't no plan for that. You just got the white devil and you have to accept it. It ain't no, you have to pay homage to the black beautiful God right, right here. Right. And the goddess. Right. You have to pay homage. We come first. It ain't no if, ands, buts about it. You have white, you got light skin in there. It is what it is. Yeah. You have to pay homage to it. Yeah. You got that retarded shit in you. You're going to be acting retarded sometimes. You're going to be okay sometimes because you got the black and you can have that white shit. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to put I you on the side of the line. I don't deny that. You know I think that that's, but isn't that one of the problems we have to face? in the African community, that it is what it is. Right, we it can't is. go back and change, right. we can't go back and change, it's, it's we got not, this devil in it. It's not classism, but, the, but right. balance. Right, right. That means that the majority- what I'm scared of is to sound like some Hitler shit. No, watch, the majority of people, we, we talk about America, but we talk about the world, and we say the largest, the, the minority of people control the largest amount of wealth right. in the world, which is the white man, right? right? Right. But when we look at, within the microcosm of the black conscious community, 
that's supposed to represent global African supremacy, that's supposed to represent black supremacy, black nationalism, pan-Africanism, and the majority of our representation is light, that's the same thing as United States imperialism. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's still white imperialism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we can't preach black love and black nationalism and black consciousness and, then, and, and not give the type of reverence or create the type of balance right. to show that we have gotten over our Willie Lynch syndrome right. Right. about how we feel about the darker people of our race. Right. Right. That has to change because the melanated people, honestly, from what I've experienced, was getting it within a conscious community. They was getting attacked within the very conscious community itself. But what about our like That's supposed to represent them now. What about our light complected people who are capable? I mean, do we, do we just, that's what I mean about classism. Do we look at them based on his skin complexion or based on his or her skin complexion? And something they had absolute no control over. You know, if I had a control in my, because I'm not light skinned, brother, that's the first thing you gotta get that recognized on tape. You know. Let me be honest though. Yeah. The white man has no control over his skin complexion. Right. Exactly. It's the same argument. Exactly. It's a, it's I'm not a, saying attack the light skinned people right. of our race. I'm just saying, if you're going to have black love, yeah. have melanated yeah. black goddamn yeah. love. Yeah. You got some and have, allow that, black that leaders, allow the melanated people yeah. to rule and step into positions yeah. to represent themselves. Yes. Right. Yeah. You let the cops beat us down over here, and then you oppress us over here. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. right. Until we can rise up and change our imagery yeah. and, and be represented in a different light, mm -hmm. then we can be respected in a different light. I feel that. You know. You got something you want to add to that? We got young children that, you know, they hate themselves because of the dark skin they are. You know what I'm saying? The nappy hair they are. You know what I'm saying? And it's not the fact that we're trying to be racist or we're trying to be hate the lighter skin, but we have to actually pay homage to who came first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just for the little kids. You know what I'm saying? Because they hate it at times. You know what I'm saying? What they see on the TV, it ain't what they see in the mirror. Mm. So you have to at least start somewhere and represent somewhere. Yeah, I understand. We've been mixed and we all got stuff in it, but... We gotta start somewhere. You know? I agree with it. But the danger that I fear is that, you know, I have a light complexed son. The fear that I have of that is that I will be in branding him self hatred. You know what I'm saying? He has a homage for like his mother's dark complexion. I love dark complexed women. That's just my thing. You know what I'm saying? But I don't wanna in, in, in instill in him an inferiority because this devil committed a crime against his people. Right. You know what I'm saying? That you're inferior to any man right. based on your skin complexion. Right. But that's the same thing I'm telling them about this goddamn white man. Right. You infer He's trying to teach us you're inferior because got, you're too dark. I got light and then I don't too. want brothers to teach him you're inferior because you're not dark enough. I got light children too. You know right. what I tell them? Please talk. Back the black man. Get behind the black man, man. Right. Let's tear down imperialism and Willie Lynch. Okay. That's what I tell my children. Back the, don't, don't, I said don't parade your light skinned ass up there, yeah. man. Right. That's the black man. Yeah. Because I know this from experience. Even to this day, they don't want to see no, I eat nigga rule. They don't want to see no black, light-skinned people don't want to see no black man rule. They're intimidated by that. If, you, right. if you're if a black, if you're a melanated leader, you're a gangbanger. Right. If you're a light-skinned leader, you're a minister. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're a dark leader, you're a political prisoner. Yeah. If you're a light-skinned leader, you're a politician. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, there are some situations contrary to that, yeah. but the majority, that's what I've been, that's what I've been seeing. I mean, it's set up Even like now. that. I can't, yeah. I can't disagree with that. I think it just raises some good questions. I can't disagree with the way the system is set up. I'd be sitting here pulling your leg and I wouldn't even attempt to insult your intelligence like that. I've but I think, it. That's how yeah. I got to this point. Yeah. I looked around and I was looking at light skinned niggas. I'm yeah. like, y'all niggas don't want to see me rule. Yeah. yeah. So we I said, let me quit watering, let me, let me get to the point yeah. so that I can step into what I'm supposed to step into black supremacy. Let me see how that sit with you. If that sit with a light skinned person, you good with me. Yeah. If you can stomach that, yeah. but if you feel bad about people that have been mistreated in America and pushed to the bottom and treated like they nothing, and now they stepping into their supremacy, if you got a problem with that, don't call yourself no black nationalist, yeah. man. Don't yeah. call yourself no pan african because yeah. Pan-African would have to be the universal expression of what black people are. But I'm going to tell you in the same fold, the light complex that people can say the same thing. Don't have a problem with our light because we're birthed out of that same African experience. You know what I'm saying? It's not really a color, it's a frequency. Right. True. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta yeah, look at We benefit more in America, but when we dislike our people, because that's that's what happened in Rwanda. When the, when they pulled out, when the Hutu and Tutsis, when they the, the, the British, when they British had favored one people, and so when they pulled out, they took the hatred, hatred of the British out on African people, their countrymen. You know what I'm saying? It's genocide. It's a form of genocide. We have to be careful not to fall into the same trap of because they have set up a system that we allow that to de uh, develop our emotions towards our own people.
Right. But you have to actually look at, you know what I'm saying, what you're actually looking at. You're not looking at a color. You're looking at a frequency. And what we have on our skin is melanin. And they actually tell you the more melanin I have, the more common sense you're going to have. Yeah. And the more lighter you are, the more time you're going to act, actually act chaotic. You know what I'm saying? It's not the fact that we're actually trying to be funny, but we actually have to keep an eye on some of those, not all light-skinned, yeah. but some of those that have the mindset of a white. You know what I'm saying? Even though that if we still have brothers that's darker than us that has the mindset of white. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that we have to really keep an eye on it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's really not a color thing, it's a frequency thing, and you know what I'm about, saying? It's about, if you look at it like that, it's, it's, it's about democracy. Yeah. What complexion is the majority of black people within the black community? Are they light complexion? Are they light or dark? What you think? You know, I've never even really just thought about it, but since you put that question... Look around now. Yeah, I guess you would say light. You would say light? You say the majority say of black people? Majority, dark. Right. Um, That's a fact. Majority. What major what are the majority of black people in the world? Are they light or dark of African people? Oh, dark, dark. We know that Nigeria is one of the largest places in the world. I mean we got South Africa. What do they look like? You know? So and, and, and so to so if you're talking about democracy, then your leadership should reflect the majority of the people with no problem. Absolutely. Every now and then, yeah, there'll be light representation, but it can't be all of them. I think in that in that a personal responsibility though. In that a responsibility of if, you, if you're in an organization and you realize these things exist and it's truly a democratic organization, how did that light complected person get elected to that power? Damn near everywhere. Jamaica, everywhere you see some leadership, it's like a light skinned. Go ahead, go ahead. Did you know in New York, in Buffalo, New York, they let all the black people cook and shit and all the light skinned people get to cook in front? And then on the, on the west side, black people ain't even allowed to cook in McDonald's and, and I mean, and be uh, working there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's super racist. I mean, it's, I, and, and you're going to get that. Yeah. In Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, it's not so much racist. But when you in New York and you constantly seeing those crackers, they look at you like, bitch, what the fuck? What you, what you looking at? You know what I'm saying? And you, you get a mindset of like, okay, you get that defense mode. Being here in Atlanta, you, these folks out here, no disrespect, but they comfortable. They bougie as fuck. They get the hair, the nails, you know, they're flicking the shit, you know what I'm saying, flicking the wrist. They listen to me, you go to Young Thug. You, 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 you idol with somebody that's a faggot. You know what I'm saying? You know nothing about this dude. You know what I'm saying? You getting caught in yourself between a love affair between baby, young thug, you know what I'm saying? And, and Lil Wayne. Right. It has shit to do with you. Yeah. Now, how does that change your life? You know what I'm saying? How does that make you different? How does that, you know what I'm saying? You beeping, you you vibing, okay? You gonna vibe today, what you gonna do tomorrow? Another black boy gonna get killed, you know what I'm saying? Another black, one black child gonna get killed. And, and that's why blacks can't be, you know, we can't be nothing but uh, gangster rappers because they're melanated or demonized. Right. But isn't it up to we gotta reverse demonize. We gotta change that demonization, and that's gonna make some light-skinned people feel bad. When we went to the pro pool, well, I think if you is telling them that they're better, right? All I think marketing and all commercial advertisement is telling them that they're better. I think if we use the tactic of in reversing the demonization uh, of, of melanated people, of our darker brothers, by demonizing light-complected people, I think we set ourselves up in a real risk. I think that to me, black nationalism is uh, uh, is about solidarity. It's about unifying. It's not the, the lot. It's not a theology. It's none of that BS. It's about our problems that we're facing as black people, and if we don't unify, we're not going to be able to shake them. But you that, got problems based on being melanated that a light-skinned person might not have those particular okay. problems. And I feel your pain. Those problems might not even allow you to get to being able to present a solution to the whole. Unless you address those problems. Exactly. We went to the protest in Atlanta that came up. You know what I'm saying? The little light-skinned girl that had the thing, you know, the little show. You know what I'm saying? You know, she got finished. And I couldn't even get the blow horn, blow horn to, you know what I'm saying, say what I want to say. Yeah, I said fuck white supremacists, fuck police. I screamed this shit out because I couldn't have a blow horn. Oh, but you can have, you, you can have, you know, that little blonde shit in your hair and be light-skinned. They be revelous. Nigga, you ain't even from the United States of America. Fuck you, man. You know what I'm saying? What, what did you do in the protest for? You know, y'all ain't want to put the camera on me, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't want to give me the blowhorn so you, you know what I'm saying, you can hear the real truth. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's where your, that's where your, like you're saying, that's where your ideology is going to come in. I think we unify on the same goals and same objectives. If you know I got a sickness, you know what I'm saying, you can't get mad. If I'm coughing and sneezing, don't get mad at me for having the symptoms. Let's look at the cold. Let's look at the cause. Let's look at the flu. We know white supremacy. We know the white, uh, white supremacist power structure has made it how it is. But... Me as one, as, as someone that might be considered, I'm PK and 10, someone might be considered doing the spectrum. I know I'm off. I will even agree with some of the psychological issues that, you know, a theory of, of black people. But I don't think it should exclude me from empowerment 
him out from being empowered as a black person. I'm not gonna shackle, shake the shackles off some cracker to put some brother because he's darker than me. And he may not be most qualified. You know what I'm saying? His skin complexion, I didn't, you know, I'm from the hood and did, went through. Then, 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 then if that's the case, that will make you worse than a white man. Why? Because the white man understood that and that's why he had, he, that's why he allowed affirmative action. So he could push six white people out the way so that one black person to make sure they get representation. That's a fact. So he, so he, he, that means he was willing to work harder to find a qualified black person to make sure they have proper representation in a balanced society. So it's not discrimination against light, but just making sure that the melanated have proper representation. That's all. Oh, oh absolutely. And we, and we believe that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that we can blame the people for a system. I agree with you. I think that if you have an opportunity to help any of your brothers and sisters, that you should take that opportunity. But, and I think that they, we should honor our divine blackness. But to teach a form of inferiority to, based on your lack, like I said, I don't teach inferiority to my children based on the limited melon they may have compared to a cracker. So I can't teach inferiority based on someone's melon. It's gonna be that if he can outfight you, outclimb you, out, if he's the best man or woman for the job, they're the best man and woman for the job. And that the black experience in America is a unique experience. I'm a revolutionary pan Africanist, but I understand that the black man in America, brother, no one, sister, is birthed out a whole new unique experience. And I think that we have to view ours as such. And and so as I do see what you're saying, what I think what raised what I like a little more insight on is. Are we saying, I think I do see you saying that light complected people are inferior, but should they establish a, a class for themselves and move out of the way for darker darker people? I'm for the record, I'm not saying that light skinned people are inferior. I think there are certain deficiencies to being light, as though there, we see today there are social deficiencies and handicaps to being melanated. We cannot deny these things, but to come up with an ultimate idea of inferiority, for a person based on certain descriptions, I think it's not logical, it's not rational. Right. For me to completely um, place you as inferior because of some deficiencies that you may have as a person. So no, I'm not saying that lighter skinned people are inferior, but I'm saying that they're gonna have to stomach um, the idea of black supremacy, of melanated people being in power. They're gonna have to stomach that if they truly are about pan-Africanism and about black nationalism. That's all I'm saying. Now, inferior, no, I wouldn't say that they are they are inferior at all. Black supremacy means it covers every person of every shade. If you're black, goddammit, black supremacy. But you can't acknowledge black supremacy and have a person with a problem with melanated people, where you're taking the white man's view on melanated people. And you're, you're advancing in society, okay, not because of your blackness, you're advancing because of your likeness to the white man thus supporting white imperialism. Am I correct? You are correct. If you're advancing in society to be as to, do, as yeah. to be in light, yeah. and then using your advancement in society for being light to make yourself feel better than those that are dark, yeah. and to push those that are darker further down when you got a unique position, yeah. you know, not to remove, and I understand when light people say they're treated unfairly by melanated people. Exactly. I understand that I'm not saying they're without woe, and they're without sufferings for what they are, but if we're gonna start talking about pan-Africanism and black nationalism, you can't. You got to talk about melanin. You yeah. can't. You got to put melanin on the table. Yeah. And that's what I see people do: putting melanin off the table. And when you put melanin on the table, you see people jumping back to jumping back up from the table, man. Jaws about to break. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wait, I can, no, no, he's right. I can agree. With, I can agree with that. But I think because it's such a sensitive subject, you know, you you know, to first of all to acknowledge the crimes that has happened to us as a people, and why we have the different uh, hues and shades. But I think that is a big pill to swallow to have someone to sit there and really have to accept not only what happened, but that some of their people, you know, are saying, and due to this, we don't feel like you at where we at. So it's not the question of melon, it's not the question to me anyway, you know. And that was gonna be my next question. Do you feel, is this a general statement? Do you feel this is subconsciously imdu uh, uh, embedded in the mind of all light complected people, or is it specific groups that have been indoctrinated to think this way? Um. I'm, I'll let you get half of it. Um, I'm not really attacking people. I don't because I don't think it's a personal attack at all on anybody. It's systematic, I believe. But just because it's systematic, it's acting its way out. It's acting itself out through persons. 
of which we have to defend ourselves with and deal with. Just let me give you an example. The Moore Science Civil of America. They so damn dark. I've never seen an organization filled with darker people in my life from the ones I joined. It's some of the most melanated people in the more science of America. But what are they preaching? That we're white, yeah. white power. They've been taught that black is so bad and being black yeah. that they join the more science of America to escape the unavoidable fact that they're black. Yeah. Ain't that deep? That's how much these deeply melanated people have been oppressed by society. Well, now they, some of them are even saying white power. Yeah. If you tell me that is not a problem, so that's the problem that black supremacy is confronting. Right. We're raising the esteem, the self-value, and the need for position and proper representation in society of melanated people. But it all goes back to self, you know what I'm saying? Because when you're a light-skinned person, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you ask how light you is, your mother or your father is black. So it goes back to self. We got to, if you feel bad, when you still black man, if you, it don't matter. It goes back to self. If you can't accept yourself, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't accept yourself. You not, you can't accept your, 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 your parents and your culture. You know what I'm saying? But it, it just goes back to fighting again. You know what I'm saying? It just goes back to fighting. It's how they split up the, you know what I'm saying, the Black Panthers. How they split up the women, you know what I'm saying, the women, you know, women from the men. It's another tactic. How to split up the people? The light versus the uh, dark. Back in, the, in Kemet, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't just one color of melanin. We rose from different shades of melanin. So it wasn't the fact that it was, you know what I'm saying, some of us was a little golden brown and some of us, you know, a little blue black, you know what I'm saying. But it all ranged, you know what I'm saying, it all, all about that knowledge of, about self, you know what I'm saying, accepting self. And coming back to the realization that man and woman, black man and woman, create the universe, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and one, and one last thing is that the melanin, when you talk about black nationalism, you you got to be talking about all the all the groups I talk about in the black country community. You talk about we original people. You know, they talk about um, they go into our DNA and who we are as a people in ancient Kemet. How do you deal with all that? But if I come to you as a melanated person and say black supremacy, you automatically feel the spite. You feel a certain way. You've been studying black supremacy all the time. That's what you've been saying. It's just. When something that's more liking to the real thing shows up, because it's a costume party for a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. That's right. It's a fool party. Melanated people want power. We want fucking power. We don't yeah. want you want a costume. Yeah. That's why I don't have a dajiki on. I'm just dressed in regular yeah. clothes. I didn't got out the thrift store because I don't want a costume. Right. We want our goddamn power back. Exactly. But I know when we get our power back as melanin people, it's gonna positively affect all black people. Yeah. Once yeah. we overthrow white supremacy, yeah. but it's gonna take us to get our power back yeah. right. because. It's, it's going to take the opposite to bring change. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to take people in the middle that's like, mm, I got a job, I could be a politician, I'm Obama. I could overthrow it, I couldn't. Yeah. They're in the middle. Yeah. It's going to take that black, angry, militant yeah. pushed on the bottom. We will turn this shit over. Yeah. And that's what black supremacy is about, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask a question, because I know during the Haitian Revolution, you had a uh, Cablois Lamont, who was a mulatto. You know, he gathered all the mulattoes and the way it was, it was the way I interpreted it is that they feared that uh, Desaline and them and, and Toussaint, which were more melanated brothers, they didn't want to feel like they were going to be uh, like. I guess his, his gripe was he wanted to share the power, but he didn't want to be. You know, I guess there was a struggle for power. So I'm, I'm what I'm saying as a nationalist to all people is I'm saying. When can we come together at the table as equals? Like, I don't want to be Islam forced upon me. I don't want the more science forced upon me. When can we come together and respect our differences, but be balanced? Well, that goes for the melanated and the light skin. One, one of the things, you know, that I, that I would have to say to that too, being a black nationalist, is that's why, especially in Atlanta, you find a lot of this culture nationalist shit. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's one of the biggest problems. We think that that culture national and pushing an African culture or a comedic culture is going to be the sum all be all is going to be our freedom. But our freedom, like you said, is going to be true empowerment. Until we, you know, even a light complected brother, dark complected, whatever, understand that our problems stem from the same source. That we're being oppressed. And I may have a slightly different one than you, being a little more melanated than me, but it's still the same problem coming from the same cracker. You know what I'm saying? So we have to devise a strategy that is going to address those issues. I think too many times, this is why I don't get into the debating and the back and forth. Too many times our people like entertainment. 
and we looking for another drug, another escape. And all of these, you know, cats, and shouts out to all you the homies in this, but y'all doing y'all thing with all of this Kemet and this and that, it's just escapism. And they're never really addressing the real issues that affect us. Because when I'm on that front line, I don't care if the brother's light, if he's dark, you know what I'm saying, as long as the brother's getting it in. But that's gonna be the brother. You know, I used to bang, and I had some of the homies was dark, some of us was light. And like you said, we all go through our drama. I can understand what you're saying by society accepting the light complexion a little more, but I'm from the hood where the melanated brothers was. So we had to fight a little harder amongst our own because we was like complected to show that we were tough. But one of the things that when we realize that we're fighting the same enemy and that our objectives need to be political, e economical, and social and not just some cultural shit, then I think we'll start devising real strategies. Right. You know, the, the, the thing that has to be seen though is, is that, that we. Because yeah. we are not all fighting the enemy the same. Right. Yeah. Most of those right. young children shot down in the streets were melanated, the majority of them. That's right. I think the black man is, the black melanated man is at the bottom. When you want to change a situation and you're going to clean up the house, you want to start at the most filthiest room in the house. Right. You want to go to the bottom. Yeah. So the melanated, the black melanated man is in the worst position in America. You got, women got more power in America, let's keep it real. They got more jobs, more resources and more power. And light-skinned males have more resources and power within our society. The bottom is that melanated man in our society. So how can we claim to address the issues if we don't deal with the predominant pro the worst symptom of the problem? Like, let me give you an example. It's like you have an AIDS and I'm treating you for a cold. The, the, the AIDS of our situation is the hate of the black melanated man. That's the AIDS. The symptoms, yeah, our whole community get hit. We all go under, you know, we all dealing with race, some racism, white supremacy. Who filling up the penal institutions? Right, right, on, right. The prison right industrial on. complex. Right. Yeah. So you can't even let me know that you're serious of addressing the problem if you are intimidated about getting to the bottom of it. Right. And that's for women too. It's like, if you can't see that the black man, I always say that, it's not just the women too. We live in a matriarchal society within our community with our women. Yeah. They can't stomach a black man being in power. What's up, that black man, melanated man getting power? Calling the motherfucking police. Huh? Am I lying? You are definitely a gangbanger. But I know when we get to the root of the problem, it'll change for all shades and facets of the situation. You follow what I mean? And that's, that's my own point that I'm saying. I want to see this entire condition change. Let's deal with the problem. A lot of people can't even stomach the problem. As soon as I say melanin, and say that, as soon as I get around women, and I say, you know what, it's time for the man to come in power. They say, huh? Because what? They're doing good in America. Yeah, yeah. If I tell the light-skinned person, we're going to tear up America. Obama's not having a problem with America. He's going to get a job. The talented tent, right? The talented tent is doing fine in America. So if you want to change it, you must go to the most radical aspect of it. You must go to the most destitute, the most attacked part of it. And when you can appeal to that group, then you can turn it over. Everybody else sitting pretty good, man. That's true revolution. Oof. I mean, there you have it, the arena, and I, I can't even disagree with that. I mean, you know, when you look at the root of the problem, the melanated brothers and sisters are being demonized. I think back to that time life when OJ, Trayvon, OJ, they OJ, they OJ looking like the negative. You know what I'm saying? And 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 they lightening up Dr. King. Every time they get a new picture, they, Dr. King they got a little bit lighter. Brother, man, I, I I really appreciate you sharing that with us. You know, you know, even even I, I mean, I can't. You really. Really, when you think about it, you can't really refute that. If you're going to address the, and, it's, and it may be a bit of pill for people to swallow, but if you're going to address the issue, the dark brothers and sisters are being demonized and are being discriminated against. My brother is a, is a darker than me because my father's dark. You know, I take after my mother, and I've seen it all through my life. You know what I'm saying? Treated differently, talked to differently, even approached differently. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, if you're going to address the issues and address the problems that face us as Africans here in America, we have to address that. So I definitely appreciate you sharing that with his brother Noble. Sister, I didn't get you a jump on in there. Uh, I like to ask this young brother here, what do you watch on TV? This young you. What do you watch on TV? Tell the camera what you watch on TV. Anything? Say your name, homie. Meme. Meme. What you watch on TV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite show on TV? Air Buddies. Huh? Air Buddies. Air Buddies. Air Buddies, what's that? What's Air Buddies about? Dogs. Mm -hmm. But what the dogs do? They can talk. 
Okay, what else they can talk? What, what, what else they do? They smart. They smart. What you learn on, on, on that show? That's Batman, man. man. Man, 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 one of the ones school my sister. These one of the little homies, little cubs we be messing with from the hood. Yeah, man, man. Like I, I said, know. like I said, people, we need some help. If they got shows on these, you know. I got you in a minute, boy. I got you. But anywho, like, listen, we need some help. Our, our kids watching some damn shows about some, some dogs. You know what I'm saying? Talking. What, what is we learning? You know what I'm saying? Come on. Perfect example. SpongeBob. SpongeBob is a man. Patrick is a man. <laughs> Fuck you mean? No. And our babies is why fuck you mean? No. But y'all niggas want to come out here. Y'all want to party. Y'all want to have a celebration. Yeah, y'all celebrating. What the hell y'all celebrating? Because I, I could have sworn we were still, I could have sworn we were still slaves. That's, that's, that's okay. Uh, yeah. In a couple months, we're going to be celebrating the 4th. 1776. Uh, uh, we're celebrating the Illuminati. Fuck you mean? You celebrating something you don't even fucking know. Yeah. You don't even know. Independence Day for what? What we independent for? What is we free for? Come on now. And the sister. What is we free for? Cause I'm gonna be burning some shit up come Fourth of July. I, if I'm be free, I'm be free for real. I ain't gonna be shooting up no motherfucker. I don't wanna point the uh, firecrackers towards some police cars. Shit, fuck all the bullshit. Fuck all the bullshit. Fuck all the bullshit. Go ahead, go ahead. Some shit we ain't gonna put on. Well, I mean, some get... shit is a personal conversation. I'm feeling you, but everything we ain't gonna get any crack. But at the end of the day, you know, just one more thing. You know, I want, I want, want to get this on camera. I want to bow, you know, King Noble, cause he's he's the greatest. Fuck all those other leads. I don't know what the fuck they about. I know this man right here. This man is the great. No disrespect to nobody else. Oh, we take his disrespect. Okay, I know. But anywho, <laughs> this man right here, I've been with this man for two fucking years. This man ain't no child molester. This man ain't none of the motherfucking shit. Irritated genie motherfucking said. None of those old fuck boys said. You heard what I'm saying? Personally said, personally living with the man. All y'all little hating ass women that's hating on this man. Listen, he got a golden dick. I'm telling you. I ain't never had none. This is wife right here. I ain't never had none. No, that's not me in the motherfucking picture. But this motherfucker right here, this the truth right here. When I tell you this nigga got soldiers. Soldiers, true soldiers. I don't know what nobody else is doing, but this man is proving a point. You hear what I'm saying? We are living. We are we we not supporting the white man system at all. What we doing? You know what I'm saying? It's off. Big up, you can devil. Spot here. Now, King Noble, do you share this power? I know they call you King. So we come into power as a people. I have no power to share, man. Look at our condition, man. Any black man that can say he got power is not telling you the truth. I got strategy, I got tactics, I got compassion, I got patience. But power is something that we've yet to really totally harness as a people. Yeah, I feel that. So these people sharing power with me. Maybe they sharing something with me. <laughs> right, if it's, especially if it's about the people. We like what the sister said. One of the things, one of the things that the sister pointed out, and we have to say, which was deep in wisdom, coming here. I've never seen this until I moved to Atlanta. You know, coming down from Cleveland, coming where it's multicultural, you see white people, this and that, is the level of neocolonialism. I studied the word, never knew what it meant that a people who had been oppressed by uh, uh, oppressors would emulate the oppressors, would do, would be, in fact, be worse than them until I moved to Atlanta. They got timism, we call it timism. They got timism down here like hell. So like the sister said, a lot of what you see is from the bourgeoisie elitists, you know, coming through. In Atlanta, you're dealing with a lot of classism. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the whole black nationalist thing down here is taking a little harder, uh, taking a little longer to take hold because you got the culture nationalists who are the, who are the bourgeoisie elitists and they don't want the masses. Mm -hmm. The homies, the bangers, all these people that we as the People's Party of Panther out here talking to the proletarian, the masses of the people, they don't want them empowered. And now to add a new uh, uh, gender to that, our melanated brothers, you know what I'm saying? I'm always advocating for the, the downtrodden, but especially our melanated people. So what you see out here is just that, an affair of and you know, congratulations to us people doing the unity thing, but it's an exercise in black capitalism. I see more vendors than I actually see more people walking around and more education and more things being put out. We just got to keep it real for what it is. But that's the difference between ideological nationalism and true black nationalism. Yeah, that's right. There's a true black nationalism that we have as a people. I think what you see out here is ideological. Yeah. True nationalism is when your neighbors is like, they came looking for you, they didn't look like they was the right people, so I, I didn't tell them where right, you was at. Right. That's real nationalism. Nationalism is when you look out for your for, for your brother and your yes. sister, yes. no matter what. Yes. You have integrity to your people. Yes. 
it, not how many books you read, how many right. dajikis you got, how many festivals you went through, how many DVDs you got, but when you have common compassion that you're willing to render to the next man that look like you, that's what black nationalism is at the end I, of the day, man. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's, wrap it up. Yeah. And that's our cultural, and that's, and that's the aspect of 